Ya Rabb, qad kabura sinni. I've gotten old. Wada'ufat quwwati. And my strength is leaving me. When tasharat ummati. And the ummah has spread to the world. Take me back to you while you're pleased with me, O oh Allah. SubhanAllah, as if he knew. He's calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Arafah. Ten years in a row, ten hajjas in a row. And he's saying, Ya Allah, I've gotten old now. My time is running out. Ya Allah, take me back to you while you are pleased with me. Pleased with what I have done with your ummah. He gets back to Medina from Hajj. So the incident with Abu Lu'lu took place right before he went to Hajj. He gets back to Medina right after Hajj. So it is the 23rd of the Hijjah, Salat al-Fajr. And Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu walks in and he's 63 years old, just like the Prophet was 63 years old. The most extensive narration is from Amr ibn Maymun radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he says that on that day, Umar radiallahu anhu came to Salat al-Fajr. And I was standing in the second line and there was no one between he and I except for Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. And he said Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, before he would lead the salah, he would walk between us and he would straighten up our rows. And then Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu went to lead the salah. He says Allahu Akbar. And he said he read Surah Yusuf. And he cried a lot as he read Surah Yusuf. SubhanAllah. And then Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu went into ruku' and he went into sujood. And Abu Lu'lu'a, he had made this dagger that he sharpened from both ends. So he could stab both ways, Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and he poisoned both ends of the dagger. And he was hiding it under his cloth, under his cloak. And he was praying because even though he wasn't a Muslim, right? It's Fajr, no one can see anybody else. So Abu Lu'lu'a waited for him to go into sujood. And as he was in sujood, Abu Lu'lu'a attacked him. And he stabbed Umar radiallahu anhu with that dagger up to nine times. He stabbed him in his back, stabbed him in his front, stabbed him from his sides. And the worst wound was right in the stomach of Umar radiallahu anhu. So after he, he hit him enough times and Umar radiallahu anhu was, was laid out, then he stabbed him the hardest right in his stomach under his navel. And Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he gasped and he said, Qatalani al kalb, the dog killed me. He knew, he remembered that incident, subhanAllah, from that moment when he walked by him. And he recited, subhanAllah, right away Qur'an comes to his mind. And the affair of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was a decree to come true. And Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, what's his concern as he's laying there about to die? He grabs the leg of Abdurrahman ibn Awf radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and he says, Salli bin nasi Abdurrahman, finish the prayer of Abdurrahman. Get over here and finish the prayer. That's his concern. In the meantime, Abu Lu'lu'a, he goes out of the masjid and he's stabbing people on the way. So he kills nine people and he wounds 13. And as Abu Lu'lu'a re realizes that he's surrounded by others, he takes his own dagger and he stabs himself three times in the chest until he dies. So he commits suicide in the masjid. To now, Umar radiallahu anhu laid out with nine wounds, nine sahaba that are dead, and this incident that they had never seen before. And so immediately after they finished the salah, they carry Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu to the house of Abdullah because Abdullah's house was the closest to the masjid, his own son. And at that point, Umar radiallahu anhu had lost consciousness. And they're trying to revive him. And Abdullah is calling out, Ya Abata, Ya Abata, O oh my father, O oh my father. They're trying to revive him. But Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu was unconscious for some time. After sunrise, Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu opens his eyes. What's the first thing he asks? He says, Asalla nas did the people finish their prayer? <laughs> SubhanAllah. What a shepherd. What an amazing human being. Like that's his first concern is, did the people finish their salah or not? And they said to him, yes, they finished their salah. He said, Alhamdulillah, la hadda fil islam man taraka salah. Those that are slacking with their prayers, listen up. He said, Alhamdulillah, because there is no share of Islam for the one that leaves their prayer. There is no Islam in a person that abandons their salah. So he said, Alhamdulillah, the people finished their salah. That's his first concern, Asalla nas Did the people pray as the blood is flowing from him? And then he tells Abdullah, sit me up. And he says to Abdullah, bring me some water. When he asks them for water, they think that he's gonna drink water. But what does he start to do? He starts to do wudu. 
And Umar radiallahu anhu finishes his Fajr prayer because he was stabbed and made unconscious in the second Mecca. That's where his heart is. That's where his mind is. Then Umar radiallahu anhu, because of his strength, you know, anyone else would have died from those wounds right away. But because of how huge he is and how strong he is, Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu starts to ask questions. He says, Man qatalani? He said, Who was the one that killed me? They said, Al Majusi. It was the Persian, that, 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 that person that you suspected that day. And he said, Alhamdulillah, the one who killed me is not someone who says, La ilaha illallah. Alhamdulillah. SubhanAllah. He's concerned about the Day of Judgment. I don't want a Muslim to be the one that killed me. And he's concerned about the implications to the Ummah. And then Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he asks for some laban, for some milk. And they brought him the milk. And his wounds was so severe that everything he drank came out of his stomach. So it would flow out of him immediately. So they called for a doctor. And the doctor saw the wounds of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, tried to patch up, saw what happens when he drinks milk and the way that his body was responding. And he says to him, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, inna kamayyat fa'awsi. O commander of the believers, you're not going to make it, you're going to die. So whatever wasiya you have to give, then give it now. You have either a few moments, maybe a few days max, but you don't have much longer, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, so whatever you have to say, say it now. What does Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu do? Number one, he calls Abdullah. And he says, Ya Abdullah, I want you to go around and I want you to see who I owe money. Then Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu reaffirms the shura. And he appoints those that will appoint the Khalifa after him. And they are the six people that are remaining from those who were promised paradise, except for one who would have been the seventh. And that was Sa'id ibn Zayd. Why? Because Sa'id ibn Zayd is his brother-in-law. He's, he's, he is his cousin and Umar radiallahu anhu wants to keep his family away from the Khilafah. He wants to avoid nepotism in any way possible. And then he calls Abdullah and he says to Abdullah that I have one wish, subhanAllah, his dying wish. He says, go to Aisha radiallahu anha and give my salam to her. But don't tell her that Amir al-Mu'mineen sends salam to you. Tell her that Umar sends salam to you because I'm no longer Amir al-Mu'mineen. I'm no longer the commander of the believers. And ask her, but tell her that it is fully your right to say no to this. Ask her if she would give me permission to be buried in that spot beside the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Abu Bakr As-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, I went to Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha and I found Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha weeping profusely. And SubhanAllah, they said Aisha cried more when Umar died than when her own father Abu Bakr died. And they said to her, why? She said, because, she said, because Umar was the door between us and the fitna. He was the door between us and the fitna. She knew the implications of his death, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And in authentic narration, she says, Abu Bakr, I heard my father say, Wallahi ma ala wajhi al-ard, rajulun ahabba ilayya min Umar. Abu Bakr said, I swear by Allah, there is no one on the face of the earth more beloved to me than Umar. He's the door between us and the fitna. Everyone in Medina is crying right now because they know that Umar radiallahu anhu is dying. So Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu says, Assalamu alaikum ya ummi, peace be unto you, my mother. I have a request from Umar. He sends his salam to you and he asks for you to consider, but without any pressure, it's your right. If he could be buried next to his two companions, Aisha radiallahu anha. What, I mean, subhanAllah, you talk about a favor, you talk about a charity, you talk about giving something up. She says, I always envisioned that that would be my spot, that I'd be buried next to my husband and my father. I mean, this is her home. It's literally her room. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Abu Bakr are buried in her room. And she says, I always saw that I would be buried next to my father and next to my husband, but I know the place that Umar radiallahu anhu had with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So she granted it. Abdullah ibn Umar comes back. When Umar sees Abdullah, he's laying down, he's barely alive at this point. When he sees Abdullah coming back, Umar radiallahu anhu says, sit me up and says to Abdullah, what are you coming back with? He said, I'm coming back to you with news that is pleasing to you. He said, Alhamdulillah, that was the only thing that I wanted. And Abdullah ibn Umar then puts the head of Umar in his lap. And then SubhanAllah, he does something very interesting in his last moments. He says to Abdullah, he says to him, Oh my son, put my head in the dirt. 
so that when Allah looks at me, he'll have mercy on me. He'll see his humble servant and show mercy to him. Take my head off of your thigh and put my face in the dirt. Abdullah says, I don't want to do it. No, why? And Umar radiallahu anhu said, if this face is a face that belongs in hellfire, then you don't want it in your lap.